Some decisions are more important than others. I mean, choosing the right flavor of ice cream, honestly, not that important. But if you're thinking about, let's say, getting a dog, getting the right breed of dog is important to make sure it's hypoallergenic or as active as you think you can handle because you're picking a companion that you're going to be stuck with for a while. And so in virtualization, we have something that's nearly as important as picking the right breed of dog, and that is picking the right flavor of hypervisor for our server or desktop virtualization. So let's take a look at that. So the good news is that our decision tree for choosing a hypervisor is going to be pretty straightforward because there's really only two types to worry about. We have what is known as the type 1 hypervisor and the type 2 hypervisor. Think we can keep track of this? So what we see with the type 1 hypervisor is that the hypervisor, which is the traffic cop that provides resources to virtual machines. It's what reads the properties of virtual machine files and interprets them and hands them resources like CPU and memory and disk and network resources. That hypervisor is bare metal installed onto the hardware. So if we're thinking about the box itself, the box is a host. That is all it is. It serves no other purpose. It has one reason for being. It is a hypervisor host. Literally, the hypervisor is the bare metal installed operating system on that box. Let's compare that to a type 2 hypervisor. In a type 2 hypervisor, what we have bare metal installed onto the physical hardware onto that box is an operating system. And so we're talking about an operating system that is multifunction. It has many purposes. If it was a desktop operating system, maybe it's also a place where I can open up Word or a browser. If it was a server operating system, it, maybe it's a web server. But then somewhere along the way, someone says, on this box, I wish I could perform virtualization. And so they're going to install an application, a service, some, something like Word or a web server service or something like that. Only in this case, that application or service is the hypervisor. So now that we've seen what that looks like, let's just talk for a minute about why they both still exist. A type 1 hypervisor is all about being efficient and high performance. It's also going to be able to tie into higher level services. A type 1 hypervisor could connect to other type 1 hypervisors and provide load balancing or high availability. Basically just services where these different hypervisors can lean on each other. And initially when we think about a type 2 hypervisor, where supporting virtual machines is running as an application, our first thought might be it's less efficient, lower performing, and doesn't have these cool services. But here's what it does allow for, a multi-purpose machine. It is the fact that we have a multi-purpose operating system and virtualization is just one of many applications running on that box that really gives type two hypervisors their, their purpose in life. So some situations where that multi-purpose box really comes in handy would be development, where I want to be able to write programs and be able to test them out on different operating systems and look for the bugs and figure out how things can work in different environments without having to actually reinstall the operating system or have a bunch of spare boxes or even have to contact the server admins and have them build virtual machines for me. None of that needs to be done because I can just run it all as software on my own system. One of the other main reasons for desktop virtualization, as it's called, or a type 2 hypervisor, is because I'm trying to provide application support. Maybe I'm working in accounting and there's a particular flavor of QuickBooks I need to be able to run and it does not work with the latest version of Windows desktop. So I can run a virtual machine that runs an older version of Windows rather than having to dedicate a physical machine to supporting that particular program. Now, I just wanted to take a quick moment and talk about some of the actual names of software that you might encounter when dealing with type 1 and type 2 hypervisors. In the world of type 1 hypervisors, you may encounter Microsoft Hyper-V, VMware's ESXi, which used to be called ESX, and Citrix Zen Server. Type 2 virtualization honestly has even more in the way of different options because you're really talking about a program that's going to run on top of an operating system rather than the equivalent of an operating system itself. So on the Type 2 side, you might run into Oracle's VirtualBox or VMware's Fusion, VMware's Player, or VMware's Workstation. Yeah, they've got three. And another one I wanted to make sure that you were aware of is one called GNS3 which is actually designed to provide virtualization of Cisco routers, so a way to virtualize a network infrastructure for the purpose of testing and development and learning. 
And of course, learning is what we're all about. So keep that in mind. Type 2 hypervisors are going to be an aid to learning because you can simply download one of these pieces of software and load in operating systems and test them out. Whereas Type 1 hypervisors are more permanent installations that we're going to see in an enterprise environment hosting the fleet of servers and desktops for the benefit of everyone who works there. Well, my friend, now you've got the tools to pick the flavor of hypervisor you need. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.